Okay. So, howdy everybody. This video is about putting things, putting categorical statements into standard form. And there's two things that we have to do to put arguments into categorical, or categorical statements, uh, and categorical arguments, categorical syllogisms into standard form. So, the first thing we have to do is make sure that every single one of our statements is in its correct form. I call it primary form, you could call it uh, basic form, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for example of what we're talking about, the notes at the bottom of 5.1, chapter 5, uh, section 1, all the way at the bottom is the best place to explain this because it just gives these bold statements and then all the different stylistic variants under it. So that's the first thing you have to do. So you have to make sure that you have each one of these statements in one of our four main forms, or primary forms, which is an A statement, E statement, I statement, and O statement. Those are the only types of statements that, we're can, that we can deal with. So we have to determine just each one one by one. That's the first thing we have to do when putting an argument into standard form. So let's look at the first one. Each frog is a dog, right? So how do we do that? Well, you can either do it one of two ways. You can just think about, okay, what's it trying to say? Well, it's trying to say, right, each frog is a dog. Everything that is a frog is a dog, right? All frogs are dogs. Not too complicated. There's another way you can do it. If you're not sure, you can always do it through process of elimination, right? There's only four options. It's either an A, E, I, or O statement. So, right, is this an E statement? Is it trying to say that no dogs are frogs? No. Is it, is it an O statement? Is it trying to say some dogs are not frogs? No, right? So that's the other way you can do it. So, right, again, if you're confused about what A, E, or I, or O statements are, please see 5.1 because it's a really great resource. So in this case, right, we've identified that the first line is an A statement, right? All frogs are dogs, right? So we just literally rewrite it. To all frogs are dogs, right? No big deal. So putting in that form right there. So then we just move on to the next one, right? At least one dog is fluffy. Okay? So at least one dog is fluffy. Right? If you're if you're immediately able to look at that and say, okay, I know that that is X statement, then you're in a good place. But I still highly recommend that you look at the bottom of 5.1 because it's got some really great notes and it's got some really good examples because some of them are much more tricky than this. At least one dog is fluffy, right? That's just like saying some dogs, right? Some dogs. At least one dog is just another way of saying some, right? So in this case, we change some dog is fluffy. Hopefully, most of you caught the trick here, fluffy, right? Every one of our terms, what the hell is that? Every one of our terms needs to be a plural noun phrase, right? So dogs, frogs, those are plural noun phrases, right? It's a noun, it's plural, and it can be a phrase because it could be something longer, like people that ride bicycles, right? It's more than just one word, it's a phrase. Fluffy is not a plural noun phrase. Fluffy is an adjective. It's really easy to fix that. All we have to do is just make it a noun phrase. The easiest way to go about doing that, some dogs, or some dog is a fluffy thing, right? Or some dogs, to write it super correctly, some dogs are fluffy things, right? So now that's in standard I form. So we're moving along. We're doing good. Last one. So there is a frog that is fluffy, right? Think about what that means. You can use process elimination. Again, there is a frog that is fluffy. Pretty much the exact same statement, right? Except right now it's our conclusion. So instead of saying there is frog that is fluffy, we say, so, again, just another I statement, some frogs are fluffy, and do not forget, plural noun phrase, fluffy things, right? So now we've got that taken care of. Some frogs are fluffy things. So, now we've done the first part of putting it in standard form, we've got it 
all these put in their primary forms, their A form, their uh, E form, their I form, their O form, right? Primary form. So that's the, that's the first thing we have to do. The second thing we do is make a minor term sandwich, and that's really important. So to do that, you have to know which one the minor term is and which one the major term is. In this case, some frogs are fluffy things. The major term is always the last term in the conclusion. At this point, you just literally look at the conclusion, find the last thing, that's the major term, every single time. So, if, right, that fluffy things, by, by where it's located right here, by being the last term in the conclusion, that means it's the major term. So that means this is also the major term. Now, this is a problem, because we actually can't have this situation. What's bad about this is that we have, right, the major term, because the, this statement right here has, because this premise has the major term, that makes it the major premise, right? So this is the major premise because it has the major term. Major premise has the major term in it. Major term, last line of the conclusion. So what we have is a problem. All, it's a really easy problem to fix. All we have to do is flip our terms, right? Because we need to have major premise, minor premise, conclusion, right? The minor term is always, right, the first term in the conclusion. So we've got the minor premise on top, and that's no good. So all we have to do is just flip them and just literally rewrite these, and that way you'll have the major term, the minor term, and then the conclusion, right? This is straight up guaranteed uh, to be a recurring problem through logic. You'll see it on the web tutor. Menzel hinted strongly that you'll see it on the test, but it's just something that you have to know. If you don't do that, you can't do mood and figure, and that's the next thing that we'll talk about in one of the other videos. You can't do Venn diagrams. So putting it in standard form is really critical to being able to do those two things. So we'll use the same argument, come back in a second, and we'll do mood and figure.